Hellfire Trading Company is growing by leaps and bounds, but that doesn't mean intercompany backstabbing won't spell the end for everyone. All this and more on the pages of Marauders issue number three. Let's hop on it together and find out what happens next, shall we? Alrighty then, so as we join the comic, we check out the newly constructed Hellfire Bay, complete with brand new keeps for the White Queen, the Black King, and the new Red Queen. I say new because as a sentient island, Krakoa can pretty much just fire together whatever the mutants need, and at the moment, they needed a kick-ass new bay that sounded like something out of Game of Thrones. Now, our POV for this issue actually turns out to be Sebastian Shaw himself, once the former leader of the Hellfire Club turned one of the newest members of the mutant government, as well as current Black King of the Hellfire Trading Company and work nemesis of Emma Frost, the White Queen, and Kate Pride, the Red Queen. Overall, Sebastian Shaw doesn't seem like the sort of person who's willing to play nice and play subordinate to others, even if it means he could make a profit off it, but today is a day we see why he sticks around. You see, Professor Xavier, Krakoa, and indeed the five mutants who help run the resurrection machine are offering Sebastian something he couldn't get anywhere else, and that is the resurrection of his one true blood son, Shinobi Shaw. No, really, that's his real name, Shinobi Shaw. I know that sounds like something out of a 13-year-old's fan fiction, but still keep with me on this. How did Shinobi die, you might be wondering? Oh, his father killed him. Oh, it's not as awkward as all that. Shinobi was trying to kill his father, so really he was killed in self-defense. Well, actually, technically, that was only the first time he died. Selene resurrected him after that, but this is a brand new resurrection following a brand new and rather mysterious death. Sebastian tries to bury the hatchet with his son and get him up to speed on everything that's been going on with Krakoa and all the brand new amazing business inroads the Hellfire trading company has been making. Shaw had actually hoped that his son would be elected to the position of Red Bishop, but it seems that Kitty is going to get to fill that position herself, and hilariously enough, she's hoping regular Bishop will become the new Red Bishop. It's in this issue, too, we discover that Shaw actually doesn't spend that much time on Krakoa. After all, he's too busy trying to run different underworld affairs all over the world through the help of the portal system. We also see that different governments of the world, including the United States, have turned the portals zones into kind of military blockades. They say it's to stop looky-loos, but it's also pretty clear that the American government is sending a rather harsh message to mutants that they are being watched. Although perhaps it's a good thing that the soldiers are there because it seems that ever since Krakoa became a thing and the mutants started selling their life-saving drugs, numerous cults have all propped up worshipping mutant kind. Oh, don't worry, just as many new cults have propped up decrying the mutants, but, you know, it's nice to see that not everyone hates them for once. Now, Shinobi's not stupid. He knows full well that his father is really only using him to help jockey for power within this new organization, but maybe Shinobi's using his dad a little bit, too. You see, we discover that before he died, Shinobi actually racked up a fair amount of debt with a strange Yakuza-like organization in Japan that's still very much expecting him to pay up, so maybe a new high-paying gig in the family business isn't the worst thing that could happen to him. Ultimately, Shaw reveals that everything with the Hellfire Trading Company and the Marauders is just the beginning. He has much bigger plans and aspirations. He says that the human world and the amount of money that they can make off them is pretty much tapped, but here in Krakoa, oh, well, that's just endless opportunity. A new nation is going to need a Coast Guard, a Navy. And he wants all of that to be a Shaw family production. Because of that, he has given his son a brand new ship, a military frigate that he can captain on his own, and basically ask as his own right hand during all this internal fighting between the different kings and queens of the Hellfire Company. The only thing Shinobi wants to know for sure, though, is how exactly did he die the last time? Well, Daddy Not-So-Dearest has a theory, and that is he thinks Shadow Cat did it. Which is actually a pretty interesting theory, because when we flash back to his autopsy, Shinobi did indeed have his own hand phased through his own body, which could have killed anyone. Of course, this gets a lot more complicated when you stop and remember, wait, what's Shinobi's own power? again. Oh, he's a density shifter too, only unlike Kitty Pride, who can walk through whatever she wants, he can actually make his body impenetrable. So, you know, why not throw in a little murder mystery right here as the comic comes to a close, why don't we? And so, that was Marauders issue number three, and once again, I'm really enjoying what Duggan is throwing down here in this book. I like how seamlessly so far this book has been able to move through different tones and different characters. Heck, Shaw was the antagonist getting dunked on by everyone in issue two, and yet here he's actually the main focus, and you 
you feel kind of bad for him. His family is dysfunctional, but you know, don't feel too bad for him. He's the reason it is that way. Shinobi Shaw looks like he's going to be a fun addition to this book too, especially as it looks like we're going to be getting into some Game of Thrones territory where everyone is playing against each other. Everyone's trying to climb that corporate mutant ladder and no one really knows who to trust. Overall, I feel comfortable giving this one a 7.5 out of 10. Nice little read. Hey there, everyone. Cape Jewel again, and I want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you see, be sure to like, subscribe, comment. It really helps drive engagement and helps me out too. Also, if you are a patron, which you can become for as little as a dollar a month, you will get exclusive content that no one else can ever see, and you'll get to see the Comic Multiverse podcast before anyone else too. You can check out all this and more down in the description. And until next time, everyone, this has been Cape Jewel, and I'll see you all next time. Cheers.